What is happening, everybody? This is Cody, aka DFS Prodigy, coming to you live, breaking down this upcoming DraftKings UFC Fight Night Vittori versus Kinnear. Um, before we begin, hit like button for me, though. Definitely subscribe. We're breaking down UFC. I know the NBA season is coming to a close. We have NFL coming up. I cannot wait for NFL. So, in the meantime, I'm going to be doing mainly some UFC. I'm going to try to dip into some golf a little bit. I'm always doing tennis, you know that. Um, but NBA was our main sport. But with that gone away, um, we still have sports to talk about. So I still want to keep the YouTube channel going, obviously. So that's why we're going to break down some UFC. But like I said, this is fight night happening tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the Apex. So first fight, we have Bukakis versus Pauga. Again, sorry if I messed up some names. But I do not understand these odds. Uh, the negative 165, I don't understand it whatsoever. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. We have Bukakis at 9,000. We have Pauga at 7-2. I don't see why Bukowski is a nine thousand price tag. Uh, Palga coming in at seven two. If we look back, Palga's coming off a decision one versus Jordan Wright. Bukowski, I know he looked okay against Tyson Pedro, but I, I don't trust him. I, I don't trust, especially when he uh, fought Roundtree, lost to a KO there. Um, it just I don't I don't understand it. Um, I think Pauga is a better fighter out of the two. Um, you're basically having a striker in Bukakis, in Bukakis that I don't know how he's going to react to Pauga pushing the base. I think Pauga has more upside at this price tag at 7-2. It's kind of why I'm leaning towards going to the Pauga side. Uh, there's other options at 9,000 I'd much rather go to. I'm just trusting Pauga a little bit more than Bukakis. And especially being the first fight of the night, I don't really like getting to this fight. Um, I hate going to the first fights because that kind of break makes a break makes or breaks your night. Um, so again, I just don't trust Bukakis here. I much rather go to Palga, but to a fight that I much rather go to with Ronnie Lawrence and Daniel Argueta, um, this is the fight I want to target. I love Ronnie Lawrence here at eight seven. If we look back, he has been a man amongst boys grappling. Grappling is his bread and butter, the wrestler. If we look back, I know he's coming off a loss, but that's a good loss. Mono Martinez, good win. Uh, Vincent Cachero, ground and pound. We saw the wrestling there. I like the wrestling that we see from Ronnie Lawrence. The takedown upside that he brings to the table is going to rack up fantasy points. We know takedowns are the main point of, uh, the main point of action. Dino Argueta, um, he has... The loss to Damian Jackson is the one that says a lot for me. That loss was not great. Damian Jackson, I know he was going through some stuff, and he was looking like a different fighter. But that that fight does not really leave a good taste in my mouth. So he's going to push the pace. He's going to shoot for takedowns. That's what I'm leaning towards. That's what I like to see. This is why I'd rather go to Marnie Lawrence. All right. So we have a young fighter in Blita versus... Gabriel Fernandez. So, Bleed, I believe she's only like 21 or 20 or 22, maybe. Let's look back. Yeah, 21. So, Bleed is a heavy favorite, which is well deserved. Um, The thing with this fight, I don't know how to feel about that now. Tell me a silver loss. I know that that was a big fight for her. She won a Dana Ward's container series, first fight. I know that's a good fight, but that's not a good... What I'm trying to say is that knockout loss is what's worrying me, but this fight should be in her favor. Uh, Bleed is going to, like I said, she's a wrestler. She has striking. The striking is what I'm worried about with Gabriel Fernandez. She's gonna, uh, Bleed is going to basically watch for the striking offense from Gabriel Fernandez. At 6-7, I'm not paying that price tag. I don't really like Bleed at 9-5. You're going to need to finish that price tag. I'd much rather go to <laughs> Army and Sarukian. But this is kind of how it is. I'm kind of wishy-washy on this fight. Bondar versus Hernandez. I like Bondar here at 7-9. That's a cheap price tag that you can give for Bondar. Bondar. So Hernandez, he's an okay striker on the feet. He has power behind the strikes. That's his bread and butter. He hasn't looked really great in his recent fights, though. I know Bondar. I know he's, he's nasty grappling. That's basically his bread and butter. If we look back at the tail of the tape, let's bring it up. So, Bondar, coming off a loss, Malcolm Gordon, TKO. 
And then he kind of was in the regional scene a little bit. Carlos Hernandez, though, Alan Nashimito, not really liking that loss. I mean, he has an okay win there. I just don't like the odds. I'd rather really go to Bondara plus 110, who I know has the grappling upside, who I know has the grappling finish upside. At 7-9, I don't mind paying the price for that. Um, it's kind of what I'm looking at. Cordenas versus Kang. Let's bring up the tail of the tape. So we have a bantamweight fight. Cordenas on a win streak. Came from Dana White's contender series. We look back. Ronnie Yaya lost for Kang. Don't like that. And then Batgirl. Let's look back. So 8-8 eight, eight for Cordenas. 7-4 for Kang. This is kind of a fight I'm just looking at and saying I'm going to fade both sides. I'd much rather go to this Costa fight. I'd much rather go to this Mata fight. Almeida, I'd rather go to that fight. I'd rather go to Armin Saruki and I'd rather go to the main event. This is a fight I'm not really looking at. I think this is going to be a battle on the feed. This is going to go back and forth between the two. And if you had, if I had to pick a side, it would be Corones. But again, I'd much rather just go to other fights like the Costa fight and Flick. So let's talk about Jimmy Flick for a minute. He came out of retirement, came back, blood terrible. I don't know how to feel about the whole retirement situation. If we look back five months ago, he lost to Charles Johnson. Don't like that. And then two years ago, he won against Cody Durden, which is a decent win. It's Cody Durden. Um, if this fight was two years ago, we'd be looking at flip odds. We'd be looking at negative 240 for Jimmy Flake and then Costa at the plus 190 underdog. But this fight is now. So, this is why I'm liking Costa right now at 9-4. The finishing upside is definitely going to be there. I don't trust Jimmy Flick at all. I, I don't trust him at 6-8. Much of the go elsewhere are the other underdogs. I know the underdog is screaming on this card. Some of them are. But again, this is the fight is now. I trust Costa much more on the feet to knock out Jimmy Flick, get him another knockout loss. I don't know where Jimmy Flick's head's at right now. That's why I'm just fading him and much rather go to Costa. Then Sal Cobb versus Dolby. We have two older fighters. Let's bring up the records. So, Nicholas Dolby, Muslim Salvakov, So Salikov. Coming off a win versus Andre Filio. Decent win six months ago. Dolby coming off of okay win against Juan D. Alvarez. So the thing with this fight is... They're coming up in age. <laughs> I don't like this. This is kind of a fight on DraftKings that I'm looking at, and again, saying I'd rather go elsewhere to other fighters. I don't really like Dalby at 7,000. I don't really like Salvacov at 9 2. But again, I can go to Armin Sarukian. Once again, he's going to be a high priced fight. I thought Sarukian is going to be high owned. But again, it is what it is. So Dalby, he's physically going to be ready. I mean, if you look back on his Instagram, he is physically fit for his age. Um, Salvacov, he has power. This is probably it's going to be on the feet. He's going to look for that knockout punch. At 9 2, if he gets the knockout punch the first round, I'm going to say, all right. Sounds good to me. It is what it is. I'll be going elsewhere. Um, it's kind of how I feel. Mata versus Torres. This is Torres's fight to win. I do not like Mata at all. Don't like him. So going to lightweights. Mata coming off a win versus Cameron Van Camp. Decent win, uh, but he lost to Jim Miller. Old veteran Jim Miller. Manuel Torres coming off a win versus Fred Camacho. Again, an older fighter. And then Colton England. I liked what I saw on Dino One's Consider Series. So, Torres has a, basically, as this fight's going to be on the, on the feet, like I kind of said. Um, the striking is going to be there for Torres. He's going to be basically with the pinpoint accuracy. I like that. Mata, he's going to try to push this pace and basically try to avoid the knockout punch from Torres, which I think Torres is going to land. At 8-9, I like going to him. But now we have a battle of Styles versus Almeida versus Sabatini. The grappler in Sabatini and the striker out of Almeida. I can never get Pat Sabatini right. Um, Damon Jackson, again, loss. Um, TJ Laramie, not the greatest of wins. Took a lot's okay win. Um, I, I like that win over basically TJ Laramie a lot more. I like the Tucker Lutz win over TJ Laramie a lot more. And then Lucas Almeida coming off a win also. So Almeida is going to be a dog that I'm liking. The reason why is I. it's going to be, like I said, grappling versus striking if – Almeida can avoid getting thrown to the ground by Pat Sabatini. This is going to be his fight to win. This is going to be the fight where he can easily 
look at this file, look at this, and basically say, I'm going to look for that finish upside. And the seven one, it's going to pay dividends for us. So, that's up, Genie. He can get the win off the grappling in. He can sub him in round two, which I can kind of see. But again, I just like Almeida. I, I want that finishing upside at seven one. It's kind of what I'm liking to fit into our lineups. And then Christopher Duncan versus Armian Petrosian. Again, sorry if I messed it up. Well, now my computer is being slow. It is what it is. All right. So Chris Duncan, he's been, he's a promising contender. Um, everybody's liking him. Everybody's talking about him. He was amazing in Cage Warriors. Petrosian, kind of a win-loss record. Um this is the deal about this fight. Chris Duncan eight says this this fight's kind of in the no man's land of price tags because do you want to go to seven six for Petrosian? Um, this is the second USC fighter for Chris Duncan, and like I said, he's on the come up. Everybody's talking about him. Everybody's saying how great of a fighter he is. The boxing is excellent for Chris Duncan. I think this fight's going to go back and forth to a decision. Uh, that's why I'm kind of just saying this is no man's land. This is where meh. I mean, Petrosian he has grappling and striking. He's kind of all around fighter. Um. Like I said, I think this is going to go tit for tat, and this is going to go back and forth, and that's why, man, I'd rather go elsewhere. Go and lock in Sarukin. 9-8. I love Sarukin here. Everybody's going to say he's going to be high-owned in cash. In GPs, I'm still playing him. Is everybody going to see that price? They're going to say, no, I'm not playing it. For the co-main, though, I'm, I'm loving this. This is Armin Sarukin's fight to win. Joachim Silva, he's not a bad fighter, but he's come up in age also, and I'd much rather go to Sarukin in this fight. He's a massive favorite, obviously, negative 1,000. He's a big favorite. Um, Silva, he's been up and down in his career. I don't know what to think of it. It's, it's give or take. You don't know what to expect from Silva. That's the problem also is that's why my little voice in my head is like, ah, it's going to be tough. Uh, I'm just not playing Silva, though. Um, he has potential. Sorokin has potential. He's going to be one of those greatest fighters. He's going to be one of the good fighters, not the greatest fighters. I don't mean to say that. One of the good fighters in the, in the UFC. I think he's going to have a belt one day. And I think this is his fight to win. I think this could be a quick finish. Um, let's go to the main event. Kenanier versus Vittori. So, I like Vittori here at 8,000. Um, this is going to be a kind of a, another back-and-forth fight. Vittori has an all-around fight upside. Kenanier, we know what Kenanier's upside is. That one-punch knockout. He's going to look for that punch. And if he doesn't get it, he's going to he's gonna lose. I mean, Sean Strickland, split decision, won that. Lost to Israel. Won against Derek Brunson. Again, KO. Elbows. Um, looking back at Vittori, he's kind of been up and down. And then, I like I said, I think this is Vittori's fight to win. 8,000, I'm liking it. Um, the volume that Vittori's going to bring is amazing. I like the volume. And the striking output, he just needs to avoid that one-shot KO from Kinnanir, which I think he will. So, it's kind of what I'm thinking. Ronnie Lawrence, Almeida, Saruki, and Vittori are kind of my main four. Who's the A2 left over? So, again, I know this has kind of been up and down with the UFC. I'm still trying to get into it a little bit more. Um but we're going to be dig into it every single week now with no NBA, and I cannot wait. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Have a great and safe rest of the night, everybody. Have a good one.